This year's running back class is one of the weirdest I've ever evaluated. Usually we have some type of consensus, whether it's a consensus RB1, even a consensus top two, where some have one guy as a two, the other guy as the one. Not this year. There is none of that. No consensus whatsoever. The guy I have as RB1, somebody else could have as RB6. My RB4 could be somebody else's RB1. Now, I'm sure draft capital and landing spot will add some clarity, but with the NFL draft still about 10 days away, I wanted to talk about my running back rankings and give some context about each player and why I have them ranked the way I have them. And if you want to get deeper into my running back rankings or to see my rankings at quarterback, wide receiver, or tight end, we have a dynasty rookie draft guide dropping this week at yardsperfantasy.com. You can find it on the website or just download the Yards Per Fantasy app. It is free. We have about 60 player profiles, my rankings, scouting reports, fantasy analysis, and of course, after the NFL draft, we will update it with post-draft analysis for every single player. So go check that out, yardsperfantasy.com. We're going to kick it off with RB12. My RB12 is Isaiah Davis from South Dakota State. Isaiah Davis is a big running back who runs with power and physicality. He displays good patience and vision behind the line of scrimmage as he works his way to the second level. His strength and constant leg churning make him difficult to bring down on first contact as he seems to always gain additional yardage. Now Davis does have a tendency to try to bounce runs outside more often than he should, which is something he will need to work on at the next level, especially where his athleticism will not translate nearly as well to the NFL as it did at South Dakota State. And he has the requisite traits, but his speed and explosion are not going to blow anybody away. And Isaiah Davis showed enough in the passing game to believe he could add value as a check down option in the NFL. He won't necessarily be a receiving weapon, but he has the hands to catch swing passes, screens, and dump offs. Davis projects as a backup running back at the next level, but his size and his history as a workhorse will give teams the confidence that he can handle a heavy workload when needed, plus the versatility to play on all three downs. They're also going to trust him to protect the football given he only fumbled three times on nearly 700 carries in college. And that's a big factor for coaches that gets these guys on the field. If they can trust a young running back... That's great for us for fantasy purposes. And that's going to help him get mid-round draft capital on NFL Draft Weekend. And then that'll be about the same in Dynasty Rookie Drafts as well. He'll be like a third, fourth round pick. You're going to select him with the hopes that he lands a backup job and then finds himself in a fantasy-relevant role at some point during the season in the case that his starting running back ahead of him gets injured. Coming in at my RB11 is Kamani Vidal from Troy. Kamani Vidal was a highly productive running back over his last two seasons at Troy. He has good size to be an NFL workhorse with impressive size-adjusted speed and burst. He is a between-the-tackles runner with the explosive trace to break off chunk plays. He follows his blockers well, and he's rarely tackled for a loss. And once he's in the open field with a head of steam, Kamani Vidal is very difficult to bring down. And even when you do get hands on him, Kamani Vidal is always driving his legs and pushing forward to squeeze out one extra yard or two. And in the passing game, Kamani Vidal is a very capable receiver, but you're not going to mistake him for a receiving weapon. Instead, he's a reliable target on swings, screens, and checkdowns. Now, he is going to have to improve in pass protection if he's going to be a true three-down player. And looking ahead to his NFL outlook, Kamani Vidal will have to fight for a roster spot, but assuming that he makes a team, he has a shot to develop into a solid RB2 or RB3, kind of like a Jalen Warren type. But just keep in mind, he does have the trace to be a workhorse running back if he ever gets the opportunity. Coming in as my RB10 is Isaac Guarendo. Louisville's Isaac Guarendo is an intriguing running back prospect despite the lack of college production. His combination of size and raw athletic traits with speed, explosion, agility is about as impressive as it gets. Let's be honest, Isaac Guarendo was a little-known prospect prior to the NFL Combine. That was before he ran the fastest 40 of all the running backs at 4-3-3, and then he also jumped out of the stadium. So it probably won't surprise you then when I say that Isaac Guarendo is a threat to take the ball to the house anytime he touches it. He's a decisive runner who hits the hole with purpose, and he has the explosion to get to the next level of the defense very quickly. Now, he's not really one to make a defender miss with his open field elusiveness, but at 221 pounds, Isaac Guarendo is not exactly easy to take down when he gets ahead of steam. Now, while his speed does make him a constant home run threat, Isaac Guarendo can sometimes try too hard to find that big play. 
That's something he's going to have to work on in the NFL if he's going to have a bigger role. He's going to have to be more disciplined. But overall, he does have good vision. And in the passing game, Isaac Guarendo is a quality check down option on the backfield. He has good hands and he's a quality pass protector. Now, the giant hole in Isaac Guarendo's profile is his lack of production. He started his college career at Wisconsin where he played sparingly while backing up Jonathan Taylor and then Braylon Allen. And then even after he transferred to Louisville, he continued to operate as the team's number two running back. And that's likely going to be his role in the NFL as well. He's going to be a team's number two or number three, but he's going to be able to provide value on all three downs. He can kind of act as that change of pace, explosive element out of the backfield. However, if he's ever able to develop to the point where he becomes a team's primary ball carrier, Isaac Warrenda would become one of the most dangerous running backs in the league. And he certainly has the frame and the athleticism to do it. And despite the underwhelming production profile, Isaac Warrenda is going to garner some attention on draft weekend. It's hard to see a guy this athletic fall beyond the middle rounds. Some NFL team is going to call his name with the hopes that he develops into that athleticism and they get a steal in the fourth or the fifth round. And in Dynasty, Isaac Warrenda was worth a similar shot in our rookie drafts based on the tantalizing upside of a 100th percentile athletic specimen. Coming in as my RB9 is Clemson's Will Shipley. Will Shipley is an undersized running back who can add value as both a runner and a receiver. He is a mismatch out of the backfield who can run any route from the running back position as well as kick out to the slot. He has the skill set to create separation against linebackers and safeties and natural hands to be a reliable target from any depth. And as a runner, Will Shipley displays good vision and patience with lateral agility, acceleration and instincts to use his blocks effectively and to create on his own. He's not quite a home run threat, but he has the requisite speed to pick up chunk plays and to beat defenders to the edge. And once he's in the open field, Will Shipley has the elusiveness to make defenders miss. Where he's lacking is in short yardage and goal line situations. At sub 210 pounds, Will Shipley doesn't quite possess the size or the strength to consistently win with power. He's good enough to break through some arm tackles, but he's not the guy you want on the field when you need a few tough yards. At the NFL level, Will Shipley projects as a quality number two running back who will be a nice complement to a big bodied between the tackles grinder. He'll add a ton of value on passing downs while serving as a change of pace runner. NFL teams are going to value his versatility as a runner, receiver out of the backfield, and in the slot, as well as the ability to be an effective kick returner. That should be enough to garner round four draft capital. And in Dynasty, Will Shipley will be a solid pick in the third round of rookie drafts who can become a high floor play in PPR formats. Coming in as my RB8 is Dylan Lauby. New Hampshire's Dylan Lauby is one of the funner running back prospect in the 2024 NFL draft class. He was wildly productive over the last two seasons, albeit at New Hampshire and in the FCS. But Lauby showed he can be a quality runner between the tackles with good vision, patience, and a knack for finding the cutback lanes. And he has enough speed and burst to create breakaway runs. Where he really shines, though, is in the passing game. He creates matchup problems from the backfield as well as lining up in the slot or even out wide. Lauby is a legitimately good route runner with good hands and the athletic profile to make plays after the catch as well. And his willingness and ability in pass protection is going to help him carve out a role on passing downs early in his NFL career. NFL teams are going to appreciate his versatility on offense and the experience in the return game. And that's going to help him not only be drafted, but to make a 53-man roster as a rookie and to work his way into a role that could eventually make him fantasy relevant. And that'll likely be as a change of pace guy and primary option on passing downs. Draft capital will likely come in the middle rounds to a team looking to add a receiving threat to its backfield. And in Dynasty, Dylan Lauby will be a fun pick in the third or fourth round of our rookie drafts with the long shot hope that he becomes the next Austin Eckler. And my NFL comp for him is Chase Edmonds. But before we get into more, I just want to remind you that if you want to draft any of these rookies, you can right now. Underdog Fantasy makes it possible. You don't have to wait until your rookie drafts. So go draft one of these guys or Marvin Harrison Jr., or Brock Bowers, Caleb Williams, any of the guys that you like. Pre-NFL draft rookies present the greatest value in 2024 best ball drafts that are happening right now. And when you sign up for Underdog Fantasy, make sure you use promo code yards per, and they'll double your deposit up to $100. Kentucky's Ray Davis is my RB7. Ray Davis is quietly one of the more complete running backs in the 2024 NFL draft class. 
He has excellent size of 5'8", 220 pounds, with the requisite speed and athletic traits to fit into any rushing scheme. Davis is an efficient runner with good patience and decisiveness to find the hole and hit the hole. And in the passing game, Ray Davis is well-rounded with reliable hands and the skills to run a number of routes out of the backfield. He actually has one of the better receiving profiles in this class. And that's one of several analytical boxes that he checks, including elite numbers in the big three that I look at, which is reception share, yards per team play, and touchdown share. Where he will need to improve is in pass protection. Davis does flash the ability to be good in pass protection, but he's inconsistent. He'll need to be more reliable in that area if he is going to carve out a true three down role at the next level. And then while Davis does have good speed, it takes him a minute to reach that top gear. And he also lacks a little bit of the burst that he would need to be an explosive play threat in the NFL. And when he does reach the open field, Ray Davis isn't exactly the most elusive either. I mean, he will run through arm tackles, but he's not making any guys miss with his moves. Overall, Ray Davis projects as a quality number two running back in the NFL who's going to provide value on all three downs. He's kind of your classic jack-of-all-trades, master of none. He's a big north-south runner who can also run routes and catch passes. He's experienced and he's ready to make an impact right away. He doesn't have the highest ceiling, but teams that like a safe pick and they want to add a steady presence to their backfield are going to favor Ray Davis over some of the other running backs in the class. Draft capital will likely come in the middle rounds, probably round four or round five. And in Dynasty, he'll make a nice floor play in the third round of our rookie drafts. My RB6 is USC's Marshawn Lloyd. Marshawn Lloyd is one of the best running backs in the 2024 draft class from a pure talent perspective. He has good size at 220 pounds and he has the speed and explosion to create breakaway runs and the lateral agility to work his way through traffic with ease. Some scouts have expressed concern about his vision behind the line of scrimmage, though it was an area that he did show improvement on in 2023. But once he finds the hole he wants to hit, Marshawn Lloyd uses his exceptional explosive traits to burst through the hole and quickly get to the next level of the defense. And at that point, Marshawn Lloyd becomes his most dangerous. He is elusive enough to make guys miss in the open field with the speed to take one to the house at any time. He's also very difficult to bring down with just arm tackles once he gets ahead of steam. And in the passing game, Marshawn Lloyd was underwhelming from a production standpoint during his career. However, he flashed enough ability to think he could expand his game in that area at the next level. In fact, while he only caught 13 receptions in 2023, Marshawn Lloyd averaged nearly 18 yards per reception. At minimum, he's going to be a check down and screen game option that can turn up the field and create a splash play. The other blemish on his profile is that Marshawn Lloyd was never really able to emerge as a true feature back at the college level. And he may not get the opportunity in the NFL either, but he has the upside to be a significant contributor in a committee backfield. Now, it's hard to pinpoint where NFL teams are going to draft him, considering a big part of the evaluation on Marshawn Lloyd will be based on the potential of his raw athletic traits. However, he has impressed throughout the pre-draft process from the senior bowl to the combine, which has greatly improved his chances of being a day two pick. And that draft capital is going to go a long way in determining his rookie draft ADP as well. And as things stand right now, Marshawn Lloyd is looking like a high upside pick at the two, three turn. Cracking the top five as my RB5 is Tennessee's Jalen Wright. Jalen Wright possesses the requisite size and traits to be a quality NFL running back. He has elite speed as evidenced by his 22.2 top speed clocked in 2023, which was the fastest of any of the running backs in the 2024 class. And that was confirmed by his 4.38.40 time at the NFL Combine. Wright has the patience to let his blocks develop in front of him with the burst and that speed to explode through the hole and get to the next level of a defense. Now, most of his runs at Tennessee came from the shotgun and were directed between the tackles, but Jalen Wright's skill set leaves little doubt that he can be a quality runner on outside concepts as well. Jalen Wright may have the speed to outrun defenders, but he lacks the lateral agility to be a true cutback threat and isn't the most difficult to bring down once you've got hands on him. He also doesn't create much on his own if the lanes aren't available for him. In the passing game, Jalen Wright was a zero in his first two seasons before adding receiving skills to his repertoire in 2023. He still has some work to do in this area to become a weapon as a pass catcher, but he showed enough to believe he can be an effective check down, swing pass, 
and screen game option at least. He will also add value with his quality pass protection skills, something we don't see from a lot of running backs coming out of college. And that's going to help him find an early role in the NFL. And speaking of the NFL, Jalen Wright projects as a rotational running back who can add value on third downs, as well as be an explosive change of pace running back in a two or three man committee. And with a 210 pound frame, it's certainly possible he becomes the leader of said committee. Jalen Wright is likely to be drafted probably in the third round, maybe the fourth, could get as high as the second of the NFL draft. And in Dynasty, he's going to be a fun pick in the late second or third round of rookie drafts with the hopes that his elite speed can translate to a fantasy-relevant role. My RB4 in the 2024 NFL Draft class from Michigan, former Heisman Trophy candidate, Blake Corum. Blake Corum is one of the better running backs in the 2024 draft class. He is a natural runner who displays good patience and vision and discipline behind the line of scrimmage. He uses his blockers well to get to the second level of a defense, but he's also creative enough to make something happen on his own as well. Blake Corum is a high energy runner with the requisite speed, plus exceptional lateral agility and acceleration. At Michigan, he gained experience in both zone and gap schemes, so he will be a fit in just about any offense that drafts him. And while Corum has the toughness and willingness to get physical, he wasn't the most effective short yardage and goal line guy in college. He was also not used a whole lot in the passing game either. However, Blake Corum flashed skill and upside in terms of both hands and route running ability. Perhaps this is an area of his game that he will be able to expand on at the next level. In the NFL, Blake Corum projects as a mid-level starter, high-end RB2 who can beef up a backfield in need of a plug-and-play running back. He is likely to come off the board in the second round of the NFL draft with a real shot to be the first running back drafted. Draft capital and landing spot will determine his dynasty ADP, but Blake Corm is looking like a top five running back in the class who could find his way into the back end of the first round of rookie drafts. We're now into the top three where we have Braylon Allen as my RB3. Braylon Allen is a massive running back, sitting at six foot two and nearly 240 pounds. And unsurprisingly, his game is built around a downhill running style, utilizing his strength and his power to physically dominate defenses between the tackles. Allen runs with good vision, and he's decisive in choosing a lane and blasting through the hole. He may lack an explosion, breakaway speed, and open field elusiveness, but he makes up for it with his tackle-breaking ability and the knack for falling forward for additional yardage after contact. This guy is Built for a heavy workload at the NFL level. He has a frame that can handle 20 plus carries week in and week out. Hopefully he will land on a team that runs a rushing scheme that's going to fit his skill set. Meaning he's certainly not one of these guys who just runs to the tackles on like an outside zone stretch. Puts the foot in the ground and goes up the field. He's not that type of guy. Like you would see in Miami for example. More of a gap power scheme would be perfect. For Braylon Allen. And in that case, he projects as a team's primary between the tackles grinder and goal line back. He will be best paired with a fast, quick backfield mate. He's going to come in on passing downs because Braylon Allen is below average across the board when it comes to the receiving game. And whoever drafts him is probably going to come sometime on day two of the NFL draft. He does have a shot to be the first running back draft if he could fall as far as like the RB4, RB5, with no clear top running backs in this class. And the same could be said in Dynasty, where Braylon Allen will have a wide range of potential draft slots in rookie drafts. He could go as high as the middle of the first in single quarterback leagues, or as low as like the late second. Most likely his ADP is going to settle somewhere in between. And his fantasy football ceiling is somewhat capped, given his lack of receiving game usage and his lack of athleticism, to create those breakaway runs. He is a young prospect though, so his dynasty lifespan will likely be longer than most. My RB2 in the 2024 NFL Draft class is Texas running back Jonathan Brooks. Jonathan Brooks runs with good patience and vision, and he uses a variety of tactics to work his way to the second level of a defense. Once he finds a running lane he wants to hit, Brooks will quickly cut vertically up the field with impressive lateral agility and then uses top-notch acceleration to burst through the hole. And that, combined with his physicality and his power, make him a solid fit in just about any rushing scheme. Brooks has good enough speed to pick up chunks on the ground, but he's not quite fast enough to be considered a home run threat. He does get caught from behind from time to time. 
in the passing game. Jonathan Brooks does have some work to do as a route runner, but he can get there. He possesses natural hands and he's a reliable option out of the backfield. He will also be a trusted pass protector, which will only help his case to get on the field or stay on the field on third downs. At the NFL level, Jonathan Brooks projects as a committee back who can be deployed on all three downs. Given his little time as a lead running back, thanks to being stuck behind B. John Robinson and Roshan Johnson for multiple seasons, Brooks is somewhat of a green prospect, meaning he still has plenty of room to develop and showcase his skills that maybe we didn't get to see in his handful of games as a starter. The team that drafts him is definitely banking on him hitting that upside. However, the late season ACL injury will force him to miss all pre-draft workouts and will threaten the start of his rookie season. Depending on how teams feel about the medicals and his limited resume, Jonathan Brooks could slide down draft boards further than expected. As it stands now, though, he projects as a day two pick. And in Dynasty, he will make for a high upside, yet somewhat risky selection in the second round of our rookie draft. And the last man standing, RB1, Florida State running back, Trey Benson. Trey Benson overcame a brutal injury to begin his college career to go on to have two productive seasons at Florida State. He's a big running back at 6'1", 223 pounds. He runs with violence and aggression and is difficult to take down with simple arm tackles, especially once he gets ahead of steam. But Benson is not your typical 220-pound bruising running back. He's also an excellent athlete with impressive acceleration and explosion to shoot through holes and get to the next level of a defense. And then he has the breakaway speed to take it to the house. He is a true home run threat. On top of that, Trey Benson displays good patience and vision with lateral agility and a devastating vertical cut to make the most of every running lane. He is elusive enough to make guys miss in the open field, but he sometimes will invite contact more than he needs to. In the passing game, Trey Benson has natural hands and he uses his running back skills well to eat up yards after the catch. However, he will need to improve his pass protection if he's going to become a consistent contributor on passing downs in the NFL. Speaking of the NFL, Trey Benson has the traits to be a starting running back on a lot of teams. He's going to bring value on all three downs and he proved at Florida State that he can thrive in multiple rushing schemes. As it stands now, Trey Benson is looking like a third round pick, but it would not be a surprise to see him come off the board in the second. In Dynasty, he's going to make for an excellent pick in the second round of rookie drafts. And while it's still early in the process, Trey Benson is trending towards being my RB1 in the 2024 draft class. <laughs>